All right, welcome to section 1.1, part 2. Uh, we're still in the same section, therefore it's still talking about functions. The essential question or what we're trying to learn here is what are functions and how do they work? Um, the video has two parts. Uh, uh, part one of the video is we're going to learn how to do what function notation is, how to write that on paper. And part two of the video is learn how to evaluate something called a piecewise function. All right, you may have seen these in Algebra 1 or Algebra 2, you may not know what they were called, but we're going to learn more about them um, in pre-calc. So. All right, so here we go. Part one of the video, function notation. What does that mean? Function notation's definition is the symbol f of x, so this means function, is read f of x. It is interpreted as the value of the function f at x. So it means when I plug x into my equation, what is my value? And that's all my function. So what, is that, what does that look like? <clears throat> so we have two things here. We have an equation and we have function. Uh, all right, the equation would be y equals negative 6x. The function would be f of x equals negative 6x. So they're both equal to negative 6x, but the way you write them is a little different. If you just put y equals, that just means it's an equation. If you put f of x or f uh, parentheses x, that means function. Now, it could look like this as well. It doesn't necessarily have to be an f for function. It could, it could read g of x or it could read r of x, really the letter in the front. There are some common ones. We usually use f, g, and h, but those all mean the same thing. That means function, all right? X's are always your inputs. So anytime you have an x value, that's an input, and a y value is an output. So you plug in x puts and you shoot out y inputs. All right, and independent and dependent, I'm not really worried about at this point. <coughs> so what does this look like? Example one. It says evaluate the function, so notice our function is g of x, which equals x squared plus 8x minus 2 for the following value. So we're going to do part A and part B here. So I'm just going to rewrite my function, and our 6 is our input. So that's what we're going to plug in for x. So instead of x, I'm going to plug in 6. So 6 squared plus 8 times 6 minus 2, so 36 plus 48 minus 2. So 48 take away 2 is 46 plus 36. All right, so what is 46 plus 36? All right, I don't want to get this wrong for you. Okay, I know it, but I want, to sh I want you to see it. So that is 82. All right, so my f our function at 6, so 6 squared plus 8 times 6 take away 2 is... 82. All right, so 36 plus 46 is 82. So you should write it g of 6 equals 82. Okay, hopefully that's not too hard. All right, so now sometimes we just plug in numbers, other times we plug in expressions. So now in our function, let me change the color here, we are going to plug in into x squared plus 8x minus 2. We're going to plug in an expression. So everywhere I see an x, I'm going to plug in negative 4x. So negative 4x squared, I always put it in parentheses, plus 8 times negative 4x, and then I have a minus 2 at the end here. All right, so let's simplify this now. So I can distribute this 2 to everything. So what is negative 4 squared? Negative 4 times negative 4 is 16. And then x squared, so this 2 has to go to the x2, so 16x squared, and then just distribute this. 8 times negative 4x is negative 32x. And then I have a minus 2 at the end here. And as you can see, I don't have any like terms I can't add, so there's your final answer. So g of negative 4x <coughs> is equal to 16x squared minus 32x minus 2. All right, so let's step it up one more time. So we're still in example 1. We're still using the same function, and now we're going to plug in 5c plus 4. All right, so I'm going to rewrite my original function. Okay, and then now everywhere we see an x, we're plugging in 5c plus 4. And I always put that in parentheses. So 5c plus 4 squared plus 8 times 5c plus 4 minus 2. All right, so 5c plus 4 squared. That means 5c plus 4 times 5c plus 4. So I have to FOIL this. So let's FOIL this first. 
that, so I'll change colors here. So 5c times 5c is 25c squared. 5c plus times 4 is plus 20c. And I have another 4 times 5c, so another 20c. And then I have 4 times 4, which is 16. All right, so this 5c plus 4 squared is equal to all this. Now I'm going to go to the next part. Now I have... 8 times 5c plus 4. So all I have to do in here is distribute. So 8 times 5c is 40c. 8 times 4 is 32. And then I have a minus 2 at the end. Okay, so all you have to do now is add your like terms. So I'm going to write g of 5c plus 4 is equal to, and then let's add our like terms here. So I have 25c squared. I don't have any other c squared, so I'm just going to write 25c squared. That's done. 20c plus 20c plus 40c is... 80c. Those are done. And let's look at the numbers here. So I have 16 plus 32, which would be 48. 48 take away 2 is 46. So plus 46. All right. So when you plug 5c plus 4 into your function, that is what you get. Okay. And it's a function because let's go back to the last section. If you plug something into your function, only one thing can come out. If I plug in 5c plus 4, this is the only answer I can get. So yes, indeed, it's a function. All right, so that's part one. Hopefully that's not too bad for you. Part two, piecewise functions. So part two of the video is talking about this idea of piecewise functions. What is a piecewise function? All right, so here's a definition. In mathematics, a piecewise function is a function which is defined by multiple subfunctions each subfunction applying to a certain interval. That will make absolutely no sense to you. So let's look at a graph. All right, so this graph has three parts. Okay, so it has this part right here. It has this part right here. And it has this part right here. So it is a function that has multiple parts through different intervals. Okay, so if we look at these intervals, so this, let's look at this red part down here. All right, so this part of the graph down here, circle it here. What interval does that go from? It goes from 0 to, it goes on forever here, so from 0 to infinity, the graph would be equal to this red part down here. All right, so wh what about this diagonal part here? So let's change the color again. This diagonal part here goes from, what is that, like negative 3 point something, let's say 3.8 to 0. Okay, then the graph would be equal to this red part. And if the graph went from negative infinity to like negative 3.8, then it would be on that top interval. So it's a graph or a function that has different intervals equal to different things at different times. Okay, I know that's confusing, but let's look at an example of one. All right, so here's example two. And this is an actual example that this, you can find this in your book. The average max height of children so this is trying to predict children's height based upon the height of your parents. The average max height of children in inches is a function of their parents' max height, inches, can be modeled by the following piecewise function. All right, so here is a piecewise function. It says h of x is equal to, and if you notice here, there are three equations. There's one, two, three. The first equation is 1.6x minus 41.6. The second one is 3x minus 132. And the third one is 2x minus 66. Now, what to the right here, it's telling us what interval these are located at. So we can only use equation 1 if, it's, if x is between 66 and 63. We can only use the second one if x is between 68 and 66. And we can only use the third equation if it, x is greater than 68. Okay, so let's look at an example. And it's telling us where x is the max height of the, our parents. All right, so x is equal to the max height of our parents. So on this one, our x is 70. So we want to know what is the children's future height if we know their parents' max height is 70 inches. All right, so let's plug this in. So which one of our three functions should I use if x is 70? 70 is not between 66 and 63. It's not between 68 and 66. 70 is greater than 68. So I'm going to use this third equation here. So I'm going to use 2x minus 66. And what am I going to do with the 70? I'm going to plug it in where I see an x. So 2 times 70 minus 66. So 140 
take away 66. Okay, so 140 take away 66 is equal to 74. So h of 70 is equal to 74. So what is this telling us? This is telling us that this is your parent's max height. And this is the child's max height. So if your parent's max height was 70 inches, then the child's max height is going to be 74 inches. Okay, hopefully that makes some sense. So basically all we're doing is choosing what's our x, which one do I need to use? All right, so let's look at our last example here. This is saying that our parent's max height is 66. I need to figure out which equation I'm going to use to be able to figure out what the child's max height is going to be. It says h is equal to 66. So now I have 66 in the first one, and I have 66 in the second one. Why am I going to choose the second one? Because this, sex, this says x is greater than or equal to 66. This top one says x is less than 66. This one is actually equal to 66, so I have to use the one that says equal to. So I'm going to use 3x minus 12. So I'm going to type in 3 times 66. That's my input, minus 12. So, oops, that is not it. Oops, rewrite this. 3 times 66 minus 12. So let's go to our calculator. So 3 times 66 minus 12. So the child's max height is 186 inches. Oops. Oops. <laughs> Sorry, let's back up here. I wrote the I wrote the equation wrong. It's 3x minus 132. So 3 times 66 minus it doesn't make any sense the inches that I was getting. So 3 times 66 minus 132. So 3 times 66 minus 132 is equal to a total of 66 inches. So if the parent's max height is 66 inches, then the child's max height will also be 66 inches. Okay, so you basically have to figure out which equation I'm going to use, and then use that equation to figure out your answer. Okay, so that's part two of section 1.1. I will see you tomorrow, and we'll do some extra examples.